Hey! So for this week I wanted to play something different. It's been a while since I went back to my childhood moments and played something that I'm nostalgic about for one reason or another. So that's what we're doing this week. We're gonna go back to the good old days where we played simple games without a care in the world of how good it was and for what reason we was supposedly good. And today, we can look back at them and think, oh wow, that game was kinda shit. So, it's time to strip some games we love and call them out for being old. As a kid, there were a lot of games that I thought were cool but never got a chance to play. In this case, it was Ghost Rider for the PS2. I remember my friends always told me how cool this game was, but my copy never worked for some weird reason. I remember specifically seeing my friends play on the fat PS2, but whenever I tried to play on my slim PS2, the game wouldn't get past the first loading screen, which is pretty early. So to this day, I never played this one, because even though I had the chance multiple times, I was so mad at the first screen of this game that I never wanted to see it again. But today we changed that because I finally played Ghost Rider. Uh, no, this isn't a I finally played video. I just said it because it sounded cool in my head. So, I'll already tell you this. Sadly, we will not be seeing or hearing Nicolas Cage in this game. I know, that's a deal breaker for most people. How could they have made a Ghost Rider game without Nicolas Cage himself? And you might be writing a comment right now saying, well, this isn't based on the movie from 2007. Uh, yes, yes it is. Keep in mind, the Xbox 360 and the PS3 were already out when this game came out. They even have some images from the movie, pictures of Roxanne and the caretaker, but nothing from any of the rest of the cast. I also think this will be a great time to mention, I know basically nothing about Ghost Rider. Everything I know about him is that he's a Marvel character and that there's a movie by the same name where he's played by Nicolas Cage. That's it. So sorry if I miss some cool characters from the comics showing up at some point of the game. The game starts with an explanation of how our protagonist, Johnny, became the Ghost Rider. Basically he made a pact with Mephisto or the devil to free his father from cancer. However, it seems like the devil played him and killed his father as a way to free him from it. We jump to Mephisto watching over him, being a good guy and decides to ask vengeance to bring him to hell and so he does. That's where we start playing. This works as your tutorial level. It teaches you the basics of the game, which if you didn't know, it's a hack and slash. My first impressions of this game were actually pretty good. I was impressed by how this game could easily pass as an early 360 game. The textures look really good and it has some very nice lighting effects. In many places of the game you can see the flames in the player's head light the backgrounds depending where he is. And there's a mechanic that I will explain better later, but can turn the flames into blue and that will also change the environment around you. It looks really cool when you don't even notice until it goes back to normal. Talking about the environment, the game takes place in many different places and there's a lot of detail wherever you look in any level you're in. Sometimes it has open floors that you can see through or just stuff laying around throughout the level, like pipes, air conditioners, you name it. I know, it might sound stupid, but you'd be amazed by the number of games that have nothing on its levels, making for a bland and dead design. But really, the environments in this game are probably one of its strongest points. Not everyone is as beautiful though. The animations are probably what I thought was lacking the most visually. Not only it seems like there's not enough frames, but the speed they are played in makes some of the movements and attacks look way off. Like for example, there's some finishers that you can do in certain characters. You know like in God of War, whenever an enemy is low on health you can press circle and do a finisher. It works the same but without mashing anything. However, this one for example, maybe it's more related to the speed but it feels like it lacks any weight to his punches. It's like a kid trying to punch his dad. Oh, and there's this effect that happens every time you use a special power, but it looks pretty bad. It starts pretty cool and then it becomes too distorted and you can't really see much. I, I don't know, I just thought I should bring that up. The progression in this game is pretty mixed. It has your basic upgrade system that asks you to beat up enemies, grab some orbs and spend orbs to get different moves and combos. 
However, my character was maxed out by the middle of the game. The game is separated by two types of gameplay. In one hand, you have your basic run around and beat everyone up while making combos to get a better score at the end of the level. And in the other hand, you have your basic drive around and beat everyone up while you avoid obstacles throughout the level. The second one, however, gives you a lot of orbs to upgrade your character. So it ends up being really easy to unlock everything pretty early in the game. After that, you can get our orbs to unlock other things like interviews with the developers, some pages of the comic books and concept arts. It's pretty cool that those things are in the game, it just sucks that they added that some type of progression instead of making more stuff to upgrade your character. Another thing is that sometimes throughout the game, you go through a place that will have different rocks in the way, and to go through them you have to go out of your way to a random place and get different powers from different soul elements, and after you do, you have to navigate your way to where those rocks were, so you can continue. It's a very cheap way to extend the game without having to put too much content in it. I don't think the soul element thing, to break rocks, are really something that exists in the Ghost Ride universe, but who am I to judge? But again, the most important part of a hack and slash game, the gameplay. Like I said before, there's two ways you can play this game, your basic hack and slash style and the bike sections. When I say basic hack and slash, I really mean basic. There's not a lot of depth to the combat in this one, but it can definitely be satisfying. At first you have some simple combos that let you just beat up enemies, but you then unlock different launchers, dashes and etc. You also have your shotgun, that you can mix into combos to get better ratings, and it can definitely be pretty OP later in the game. Sadly, it doesn't help you keep combos on launched enemies like you would expect if you played other hack and slash games, it's kinda just there. Sometimes you'll find these enemies with different words around them, and those are invulnerable until you get your rating to their level. It could be an interesting idea if it wasn't for one thing, the L2 button. It makes so you send a shockwave all around you and destroy every enemy on the screen. And that always makes so your combo rushes all the way up like your mom going after food upstairs. It kind of defeats the purpose of having any type of difficulty if you're giving me tools that work that well against it, but it's definitely satisfying to use. The higher your rating is, the bluer the flames on the Ghost Rider gets. I thought it was a really nice touch to it. And again, it also affects the lighting. In the other hand, you still have the bike sections, which give you way more freedom than what I was expecting. I really thought there would be some in-rail sections with the bike moving by itself, but instead you can drive around however you want to, even backwards. You don't have any combos, however. It's just your basic attack and fireballs that you can shoot. They throw some obstacles at you that you can jump over or slide under. So I guess this also works as the platforming sections of the game? Later on, you can unlock more things like a double jump, a boost button, and you can make a triple fireball, which simply melts enemies before they can even get close to you. One interesting thing about this section is that it's the only part of the game that you get ragdoll physics. Whenever you hit something or miss a jump, Ghost Rider will ragdoll out of the bike, and I was honestly surprised by it considering you don't see that in any other place in the game. Well, not that I remember at least. But besides that, the bike sections are pretty lackluster and don't serve too much of a challenge either. You go through them in between every level, and even when coming back from summer, like after grabbing one of the soul elements that I mentioned before. The music though, I don't know why I didn't notice this as much when I was playing the game, but this game actually has a pretty awesome soundtrack. Sadly, I couldn't find anything about who made it and after looking it up, it seems that I'm not the first. It is a bit off that some of the songs start in a different way trying to fit the level they're in, but always end up as heavy metal. I mean, props to them for trying, but I guess just having a heavy metal soundtrack will be enough for a Ghost Rider game.
I wish I could tell you more about the story though, but I swear I was trying to pay attention to it and it was very confusing to me. It is told with these comic book strips that actually look pretty good, uh, sometimes, but they zoom in a bit too much and believe it or not I feel like Need for Speed to Run pulled this off in a way better way, uh, yeah I mean the Wii version. Apparently Mephisto is losing control over his demons and it's your job to beat everyone up for him. It has a lot of twists and turns with Roxanne being kidnapped at some point and uh, a Blade showing up. And oh boy, if you like Blade you're gonna be happy with this. You can actually play as him in this game. After you beat the game you can unlock different costumes for Ghost Rider and Blade as a playable character. Not only as a skin but with his own unique set of attacks and moves. You can also unlock Extreme Mode, which is a higher difficulty mode, and after beating that you can apparently unlock Classic Ghost Rider, but I don't have the mental capacity to go through this all over again. In conclusion, the game got mixed reviews, winning a 52 out of 100 in Metacritic, with its GBA counterpart getting a flabbergasting 68, so maybe you're better off with that version. I enjoyed most of my time with it, especially the first half and the parts where I didn't have to go back and forth to get these soul things and it can definitely kill a day of your life. If you're in for some mindless hack and slash fun, you have some cool unlockables and a great soundtrack, and if you're really into this game for some reason, you can play it all over again as Blade, or you can just play the Blade game, it's on the PS2 too. Uh, anyway, I guess that's it for this one, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like. It really helps me a lot. And of course, a huge thank you to our new members. Skuzy, Sir Jiran, and Disco. Being a member is the best way you can support the channel right now, so really thank you so much to every single one of you. And just as a reminder, if I didn't thank you for being a member, feel free to let me know. The member thing can be a bit confusing at times and I might miss someone. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.